It's time now for our business update. And markets on Monday have suffered their biggest drop since the early stages of the COVID pandemic. Charles Pellegrin from our business desk is here with an update. Tell us how they're faring this Tuesday. Well, absolutely. Just uh, talking about those uh, uh, stocks that really plunged uh, in the U.S. Uh, on Monday, and that tends to spill over on the Asian markets, and that definitely happened. But we'll look at uh, the European markets first. But just to give you a sense, uh, the uh, uh, investor confidence really shaken by uh, the, the perspective of an economic slowdown, but also uh, uh, because of monetary policy really uh, not being uh, targeted to stimulate the economy as much as reining in inflation. So as you're seeing, European markets actually have actually rallied uh, this uh, Tuesday morning uh, with, uh, you saw there uh, just before then, uh, all those indicators in the green. In Asia, however, markets currently trading down overall, especially the Hang Seng in Hong Kong, which was closed for a bank holiday on Monday, down just over 2%. The Shanghai Composite bucking that trend, though, and increasing over a percent. The Nikkei uh, down by over half a percent, while the Kospi and Seoul down approximately around the same uh, amount. Uh, the uh, tech firms, the tech firms really leading and, and and, uh, and uh, having a big impact uh, here. And in another worrying sign for investors looking at when China's economy might come roaring back again, an internal memo from Tesla's Shanghai plant shows that most of the car production there has been halted because of supply issues. The factory plans to produce less than 200 vehicles on Tuesday, much less than the, than the uh, 1,200 units it's been building since it uh, reopened on April 19th after being shut for 22 days because of the city's harsh COVID-19 lockdown. Tesla had planned as late as last week to increase output to pre-lockdown levels by next week. Well, earlier we spoke to market analyst Han Tan about what would be needed to shore up investor confidence. The answer is not much because, for example, the Fed has uh, is staying the course with its plans to tighten rates. Um, you know, perhaps if there is some signs of the easing lockdowns in China, that could help alleviate uh, concerns around the world's second largest economy. Um, and of course, uh, if there is a shocking about turn in the state of developments in the Ukraine, that will be positive for risk sentiment as well. But overall, the near term outlook remains uh, rather uh, clouded by these angst and concerns in the markets. Let's take a look now at some of the other stories making headlines in the business world. Uh, Ukraine's economy is set to contract by over a third this year following Russia's invasion. The European Bank for Reconstruction and Development forecasting the country's GDP will drop 30%. 10 points lower than the institution's previous forecast in March, just after the war started. The impact of the war on the agriculture sector central to this decline. Next year, though, the EBRD expects the Ukrainian economy will rebound 25 percent. And gay dating app Grindr says it will go public through a merger with Singapore-based acquisition firm Taiga. The deal would value it at $2.1 billion. Existing shareholders would own 78% of the company. This comes two years after China's Kunlun tech company divested itself from the company due to U.S. national security concerns. The deal could require clearance, though, from the Committee on Foreign Investment in the U.S. And Facebook owner Meta Platforms has opened its first physical retail store this Monday. It's located at the main campus of Reality Labs. At the co that's the company's a unit that produces hardware like virtual reality headsets or smart glasses, which are also now sold uh, in the shop. While Meta has staked its future business on the idea of the metaverse, an immersive and shared virtual space, well, this has this as growth fueled by ad revenue at the company has been slowing. Shirley Sidbon has a story. Um, welcome to the Meta store. It wasn't a huge crowd waiting for the opening of Meta's first physical store. Still, the enthusiasm was there. Yeah, yeah, this will be the first, like, Apple store. This is history, and we are the first customer. I'm so excited about it. I'm, I'm so proud of it. The store is just a stone throw away from the labs developing Meta's virtual reality and augmented reality hardware. While showcasing their latest products, 
In our store, you'll be able to experience Quest 2, Portal, and Ray-Ban stories. Facebook's parent company intends to examine customers' reactions and expectations. I don't want to play shoot up games. I would like to go to places where I can visit that I haven't been before. Um, I really like the portal because we do family Zoom calls. We have family um, all over uh, the world. Um, so it's a nice product to have. Meta and its competitors have invested massively in virtual reality hardware, hoping to diversify beyond ads on its sites and apps, which accounted for more than 97% of its revenues in the latest quarter. The virtual and augmented reality market is expected to hit an annual $500 billion in coming years. Meta is prepared to lose some $10 billion this year in its reality labs to develop that future. So Meta there trying to generate the same kind of excitement as Apple does with its stores. I don't know if it's quite hit the mark. Still trying to get used to that new name for Facebook. Charles Pellegrin, our business editor, thank you so much for that update. We're